quick, what do Minecraft, Terraria, and Starbound all have in common? Besides, like, their whole premise of monsters, explore, create, build, what do you mean it's been 16 hours, it's 4 a.m.? Huh? <laughs> Random map generators have boomed in popularity recently, and that's not to say that they haven't been around a long time. Many RTS games have them. Age of Empires, anyone? Even looking back at games like The Elder Scrolls, Daggerfall, the wilderness between each town was randomly generated. Heck, the wilderness and oblivion, the unimportant parts at least, those were randomly generated and then saved to the game too, because Bethesda is lazy! But recently, there has been a huge influx of games that utilize unique, randomly generated maps every time you play the game, and sometimes even every time you die. Games like Minecraft, Terraria, Starbound, Rogue Legacy, Cavern Kings, and even Pokemon Mystery Dungeon use random map generation. And while there are plenty of people who love games that utilize this, how many of those people actually understand how it works? Well. It's all in the programming, isn't it? The code. Well, that just sounds boring. Who would want to watch a video about that? Actually, it's quite interesting, especially when you start to consider just how random it really is. Or rather, isn't. Let's start with a fairly unknown game, one that's new to the scenes. Cavern Kings is an arena game where you dig deeper and deeper while leveling up and trying to survive, and each floor is randomly generated. Being a game with this simple premise and these small, simple maps makes its random map generation code elegantly simple, which means Cavern Kings is the perfect game to use as the starting example of how these maps are made. Without getting too deep into specifics, Cavern Kings uses a script that generates randomly sized rectangles and populates the maps with different block types put into these rectangles. It starts with the borders, and randomly picks a number for how many blocks thick the border will be there. Once all the borders are there, more numbers get randomized to decide if platforms should be created, then where, then how big. And it does this a few times. It then takes what it generated and mirrors it to make the map symmetrical. Now, it goes through and randomly picks some coordinates on the map to place crates and items and such. In the event of blocks stacking on top of one another, the block with the higher programmed priority gets used. At its core, this is basically how every game with random map generation will generate its maps. Some games, like Spelunky, will also do a check and make sure that it's actually possible to make it to the end of each level. If not, it will remake the map. All of these maps are made up of blocks, which really, just like any game, is just code. Each type of block has a specific number assigned to it. Numbers, math, randomness. What else is random and has numbers? Dice. To avoid getting into specific scripts, and how each line affects every other line, I find that explaining this all with dice will help keep your mind from melting. Dice rolls are intrinsically random. The results vary each time you roll, and as far as Dungeons & Dragons is concerned, every roll is completely random and perfectly fair. When generating a new map, a computer will roll some dice to determine one thing, and then it will roll again to determine another, and again and again, and again, possibly thousands of times per second, all depending on your processor speed. Let's look at Terraria for this example, as every time you generate a map, it tells you exactly what it's calculating. It starts with a default, flat plane world of dirt, then rolls some dice to determine the terrain style of each area, be it grassland, desert, snow, whatever. It then places the sand in the desert area and rolls some more dice to determine where on the map to place some rocks, and then the size and shape of each rock. Same goes for clay and pretty much every other element deposit. Then some dice get rolled to decide where on the map you can find holes, followed by large caves. And I'm sure you get it by this point. Each dice roll, or more accurately, each script, edits the map by adding one more thing to it. Even things as small as hornet's nests and weeds get calculated this way. This is how many games go about calculating their maps. But even with all these steps and calculations, just how random is it really when you consider seeding? Some of these games will allow you to use seeds, which essentially are sequences of letters and or numbers, which tells the computer exactly how to generate a map. 
if you took the same seed and put it on two different computers, you would get the same exact map twice. Doesn't sound so random now, does it? Remember, for something to be random, it has to be entirely unpredictable. If there is any bit of predictability, it's not random. And seeds are just that. Predictable. Instructions. Seeds tell the game exactly how to generate the map, block for block. It does this by taking the numbers you used as the seed and puts them through a large mathematical equation, usually involving a Mersenne twister. It pretty much always gives you a massive number in return, which gets put into the scripts in place of any dice rolls. And if you use letters in your seed, the game just converts them into numbers first, so it's not that complicated. Some may argue, but Loxton, what if I just don't use a seed when I play these games? Then it doesn't have those forceful instructions. Well, arguing that standpoint would be... wrong. In these seedable games, even if you don't give it a seed, there is still a seed somewhere buried deep in the code. The code generated its own seed. In a way, generating this seed is the only real dice roll involved the only bit of randomness. It rolls the die to generate the seed, and then uses that seed to tell the game exactly how to build the world, converting numbers into block coordinates. So it would appear that these maps aren't actually randomly generated at all. The only randomness is determining the seed. Though, granted, the number of seeds available in a game is massive. I mean so massive that it's going to be a lot of fun to calculate. Using Math. Omni, one of Starbound's game developers, did some calculations and found out the actual number of seeds available in the game, meaning the amount of maps, blah, 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 which equals 422.22 quadrillion planets. And in Starbound, seeds are translated as coordinates for a planet, which I must say is pretty darn creative. So in Starbound, when you generate a new planet, you are essentially rolling a 422.22 quadrillion sided die. Which is a lot more than this. And the number that roll gives tells the game exactly how to generate the map. PROGRAMMING! It's pretty simple stuff, right? And remember, your computer is calculating all of this. Come on computer, you can do it! <laughs> So, does this really mean that random map generators aren't actually randomly generating the map? All they do is randomize the seed? And that's the only bit of random in there? Well, yeah. And no. Yes, because, yeah, it is. And no, because, because, no, it's not. Just let me explain. Random. It may seem random, but that's only because of our human ignorance. Think about our analogy with actual dice rolls. In essence, these are random, but really, there are many reasons why you got the roll you got. Physics. You move your hand in a certain way, which makes the dice react in a certain way. The dice then also reacts to the table in a very specific and calculatable way. If we could know every detail about how the die in a die roll or the coin in a coin flip are moving, then the instant they left your hand, we could know exactly what the outcome will be. Our human imperfection is the only reason why rolls of dice and coin flips have different outcomes to begin with. If we had perfect precision, like that of this coin flipping robot, then you could always achieve the outcome you want. This robot has yet to get a flip wrong. In computing, though, there are no rolls with actual dice. Everything is virtual. So can't a computer just throw a number at your face at random? No. Computers run completely logically. They only listen to instructions given to them, and these instructions have to be very specific. For instance, random.org is a website that does just that. Click the button, random number! Yay! But behind the scenes are layers and layers of code that tell it just how to choose that random number. There are two types of random numbers in computers, pseudo-random and true-random. The fastest and thus most commonly used type is the pseudo-random, and pseudo-random number generators are just that. Pseudo. 
Very convincing, but fake nonetheless. They typically use linear congruential generators to predetermine a massive line of numbers. When you want another random number, it just gives you the next one down the line. This list of numbers is essentially random, and as far as the typical human is concerned, it is. But it's not. True random number generators, on the other hand, look at actual physical phenomena to generate a number. Most commonly used is atmospheric noise, the world's weather at one exact instance, put into code, then through an equation. The weather of the world changes all the time, every instant, and every little thing can affect it. If a butterfly in Australia flaps its wings, it can make a different number be randomized. But even then, if for one instant you can know where every particle in the atmosphere is, and what it is doing, and how every other particle will affect it, then you would be the world's greatest weatherman, and you should seriously take that up as your career. Which means, to someone with superhuman perception, this number is predictable. Which means, it's not random. So really. If you could, just for one instance, know where every particle in the universe is, and what it is currently doing, you could know the entire future of the entire universe. Is nothing random? Is everything predictable? Everything in traditional physics is completely predictable. Everything follows a set of rules, and every tiny little thing always affects the world in some way. Even these entirely digitized random number generators are using predictable physics to come up with these random numbers. And all of these calculations themselves, while you may think of them as digital, are really physical. Computer binary is just whether or not there's a physical electron in a transistor or not. Even human behavior is decided by physics. How tall are you? The taller you are, the longer it takes for signals of pain to reach your brain. Your brain is just neurons with electrical signals going in and out. Seeing or being affected by different things makes your brain release hormones. Hormones are chemicals, chemicals that react to your brain in certain ways, making you feel the way you do, and depending on the physical build of your brain, will work in different amounts. So really, in essence, if you could know the physical build of everyone's brain, and where every single particle in their brain is, and how it's being affected at one instant, would you be able to accurately predict the entire future of mankind? Do we actually have free will? Lord, this is a video about video games! I stop being so philosophical! Alright, distant Italian. I'll hurry this along then. <clears throat> Yes, we may in fact have free will, because there is one thing, just one thing, that truly is random, and it involves quantum mechanics and half-lives. Oh, quantum mechanics, how long has it been? Since the goat tongue video? <laughs> yeah. Though this is still under debate, quantum particles may be the only truly chaotic force in the universe. Meaning the most random. You should recognize this as an atom, with its electrons orbiting around it. Well, this is very inaccurate. Atoms don't actually have their electrons orbit them, in the way we traditionally think of an orbit. Instead, the electrons are moving around it very rapidly, and completely randomly. If you took a quantum measurement of an atom and pinpointed exactly where an electron is one instant, and then an instant later did so again, it would be in a completely different place. Do it again, and another completely different place. With absolutely no pattern, there's no way of knowing exactly where it's going to be next. And this is especially the case when you also involve radioactive decays, or half-lives. There's one Swiss laboratory that offers a service called Hotbits, and what it does is it measures the half-life of a particle. And because that's entirely random, they can then put that into a random number generator and get a truly, completely random number using half-lives. Come on, Hotbits, give me a number. Three. It gave me three. <laughs> three. <laughs> How random. So what does all this mean? Well, it means that when a game advertises that it has randomly generated maps, 
they are fundamentally lying to you. I mean, heck, the very existence of the scripts in the first place that alter the randomly generated map in any way completely trumps it in the first place. A truly randomly generated map would look something like this. Ugly and completely unplayable. But does this lying really matter? No. There are so many different seeds and possibilities that it doesn't really need to actually be random for it to be a new experience to us either way. And that really is the point of randomly generated maps, that they're different every time. And they are different every time, unless you use a seed. Odds are you will never get the same map twice. Heck, odds are no one in the next thousand years will get the same map. And it doesn't really matter if they just have a massive wall of code that's designed to make a number look random, because, as far as humans are concerned, it is. But what about the Minecraft? Minecraft does it the same way as all the games I pretty much talked about. You just add a third plane, a third coordinate, a z-axis. So I hope I've enlightened you on what's really going on here, and I hope you enjoyed this video. You should subscribe if you enjoy videos like this, deep and thought-provoking. I'll end you! The next time I talk about a deep question like this, it will be answering this question. Do these units have a soul? And while you're down there liking this video, why not check out Cavern Kings? I put a link to it in the description. It's pretty fun if you like 2D arena shooters. So until next time, be sure to keep on using your noggin and stay awesome!